Welcome to Popcorn Planet. I am Andy Signor, and Sarah Silverman is not one to shy away from her politics. She's definitely a more left-leaning celebrity and stand-up comedian. Uh, she's also no stranger to cancel culture. She's made a lot of jokes on Twitter that have gotten her in some hot water, as well as worn some uh, makeup uh, in one of her sketches for her old sketch show that got her in some trouble as well. So she's no stranger to all this. And so to promote her new podcast, she decided to share some thoughts on cancel culture. And I want to share these thoughts with you. Now, I have some thoughts about this, uh, and I want to I want to share them. But before I get to that, let me let me let's hear her words. I just sadly have to uh, mute some things because uh, the first time I tried to do this over the weekend, YouTube demonetized and censored the video. Uh, you guys have complained about this. I've, I've complained about this plenty, but I have to mute a couple words here to try and help get it through the censors uh, so we don't accidentally cross any YouTube guidelines. But before I share my thoughts on this, I, I want to share Sarah's thoughts on cancel culture and a, ve a very factual statement she makes, an important thing to remember, what happens after you cancel somebody? Christian Picciolini, my friend, who was a for years, since he was from 14 to, you know, into his 20s, late 20s maybe, was the head of a, a group. Uh, you know, letter he chapter. He has spent the last 30 years getting people out of hate groups. That's what he does. But he went towards love. He was 14, he was smoking a joint, and an older kid took the joint out of his he hand and threw it out and said, you don't need that stuff, man, and gave him a place where he was accepted and cared for and loved, and that was a hate group, a neo-Nazi group, where he found family and camaraderie and a place to be when both of his parents worked all day. Going towards love can be a hate group. It could be the drama club, but that's all that it is at its root. It's just going towards where the love is and you find you're, you're going to find yourself doing a little lot all through your life and maybe wonder about it. I always think like in this cancel culture, and we all know what I'm talking about, whether you think there is one or there isn't one or where you stand on it. And there's a lot of gray matter there. But without a path to redemption, when you take someone, you found a tweet they wrote seven years ago or a thing that they said, and you expose it and you say, this person should be no more, banish them forever. They're gonna find some place where they are accepted. And it's not going to be with progressives, which ironically means to be changed, progress. If we don't give these people a path to redemption, then they're going to go where they are accepted, which is the fucking dark side. I think there should be some kind of path. Do we want people to be changed? Good question. Or do we want them to stay the same, to freeze in a moment we found on the internet from 12 years ago? And so we can point to ourselves as right and them as wrong. It's righteousness. So uh, well said. I think she's very well said. There's a couple things I want to break down before I share my own uh, analysis of this. But yeah, I don't think there's a gray area. There is a cancel culture, Sarah Silverman. And you, you are hedging your bets because even you are afraid to tell your liberal audience that there is. Because a lot of people in your audience are going to criticize you for saying that there is. Uh, and the reality is you know there is because you've been through it. Now, I don't believe Sarah was canceled. To be fair, she did lose a couple jobs based off of the makeup incident she did. Uh, I can't say the actual words. I wish I could. I'm not trying to downplay that. Uh, and she's apologized for it. She says she regrets making that choice to wear that, you know, do that offensive makeup uh, choice in the sketch. Um, but she's playing both sides there. Do you hear that? She's, she's afraid to admit that there's cancel culture. She's like, well, wherever you stand on it, where do you, st Sarah, does it exist or not? Are you saying it exists or are you just sort of humoring the people that doesn't exist for? And that, that's the only problem I have with Sarah. I'm just like, if you're going to go there, if you're actually going to be a vocal per, you know, person about this, stand up and say it. Say it exists. Prove it. Say, yeah, no, it's a real thing. We got to. Uh, so that, that, that's my biggest frustration. A little bit of hypocrisy there. Just come out and say it. Uh, but she's right. There's no path to redemption. 
they don't want a path to redemption. And it's ironic because even as she's doing this, you know, they're, uh, they're, they're the, the, the run that ran the gamut here on, on reactions. Uh, you know, some people, smart people. Yes. Yeah, excellent insight. If we continue to shut people down, provide no path to redemption, they will seek out others who will listen. Shame is a terrible motivator for change. Uh, here's another positive one. What a good word. We need path to redemption. If we feel so righteous as a progressive, uh, then we must follow others to progress and you know, all facts. Uh, but then here we go. You know, here's, here's the hate. Wait, wait, no, didn't you do this? Uh, you got canceled last year, thought, hun. You're still canceled. No one forgot about you and your Zoom buddies. Uh, let's cancel them out. Come on, ignorant. Why? Like, can't keep them, keep them out. Uh, everything she said was right, but it rings hollow coming from someone who herself has taken part in the process. Also, facts. Uh, what is she talking about? She's part of the crowd canceling people. Yeah, she's definitely playing to them, too, still. Uh, I agree with all this, but sneaking suspicion that redemption might mean accept all the leftist political positions. Uh, and that, that's where I wanted to get at next. It's like, yes, what path to redemption, right? That's where it gets problematic. There absolutely needs to be a path to redemption. What's interesting in my story, when I was canceled, uh, and some people will be out there, and you deserved it, Andy, you still should be canceled, and some will say, well, no, he's a human being, he has a family, he should have the right to support them, he's paid his price, it's time to move forward. It was a very hard thing to stand back up and fight back, and just try to you know, just tell to get the truth out there, but also get take accountability and make sure that was out there publicly. Um, and also just to talk to anybody who had a problem to sort of have a conversation so I could learn. Uh, and, and all the people who wrote me off refused to do that. They signed me off as a villain. I'm a villain forever. Get out of here. I shouldn't even be online. How do I even have a platform? How dare I? Uh, and that's that's. That is the problem that she's talking about. It's not just about old tweets, Sarah. It's about anybody who wrongs. Uh, most liberal, ho you know, Hollywood elites, they want, you know, prison reform. They're all about it. Oh, we got, you know, they've done the crime. They got to get out. Uh, and we should be fixing that. But, you know, they're, they're always about that. But then when it comes to cancel culture, it doesn't exist. And no, get out of here. Or you've been banned from society. Get out forever. Uh, like, when you go to jail, you have a term, right? You serve a, a sentence. Uh, and therefore, you get to get back into society after serving your term, right? And what's happening right now in this world of cancel culture is all these people are being isolated and pushed out and then forgotten about. And anybody who associates with them, you're guilty by association. How dare you support them? We canceled them, remember? They're not a part of the society. They're bad people. They said things we don't agree with. And so it's really problematic. And so what's interesting in my case when I came back, it was conservatives that actually heard, heard me out and offered no judgment. I was a Hollywood liberal who was, you know, thought all conservatives were bad. Anybody who voted for the president is an idiot and evil. And I learned after just talking to conservatives, they're, they're not all that way. They're not all racist. Uh, that's not true. <laughs> there are some, uh, but there are some liberals that are too, right? It really, there is no, you're all this, you're all that. And the problem is most extreme, uh, politi you know, uh, politics, either side will just go there. And what's interesting to me is I, I really wrestled with this. Are, are, are conservatives actually more forgiving than liberals? Um, you know, it's a blanket statement that it's hard to prove that either way. I don't know either group is really more forgiving, but I can tell you in my situation that the conservatives were. Liberals were more worried to be seen with me. Even the ones who were nice to me were afraid to do it publicly. Whereas conservatives were willing to talk to me and still be hard on me, not to say like what you did was okay. I don't like, conservatives didn't like that I was unfaithful to my wife. I'm not okay with that. But they, you know, they were able to acknowledge and say, I'm, I'm glad you know that was wrong and that you've changed and you're growing uh, and that you're working on that and that you know, you know, cheating is bad and don't do that again. Uh, you know, th th there's still, you know, accountability and can, that needs to happen and then change can come from education and growth and learning, right? And so surprisingly, it was conservatives that were more willing to help me get the lesson uh, and not force their politics on me. I didn't become conservative. A lot of people think I did. I'm still, I'm, I'm much more of a centrist now, uh, still probably leaning more liberal than conservative, but I've become much more open to hearing conservatives because I've, re I've realized we have to stop being so judgmental. So we do need a path redemption. Sarah Silverman's right. I I'm glad she's putting it out there, even though I agree with some of the criticism. And like I said, she's hedging her bets, trying to play to the group that cancels everybody. Um, and she herself has probably been guilty of it in the past. I do think if Sarah is going to really come forward and, and be a mouthpiece for that subject matter, which she should, because she she's been accused of it. She needs to really forcefully say, no, it exists. And I'm going to put my foot down on that. And that's what I believe. If you don't agree with me, that's your right. But I'm going to say that. But then she'll see the kind of people I'm talking about. She'll see those people are like, wait, you're already canceled, hon. We already canceled you. 
uh, the the progressives out there uh, who are like, no, we're, you're not good enough, Sarah. Get out of here. It's time for a better uh, female comedian. We don't need you anymore. You're not on, the, on our team. You're not on our side. It's really what it's become about. These tribes of you need to be, which, tri- which side are you on? You can't, we can't associate with you. Our tribe can't associate with you. It's gotten really scary. So uh, while I applaud Sarah and thank you, Sarah, for saying these things, I mean, I do worry, wonder, are you only saying them because it came after you? <laughs> and then are you afraid to really come forward because you're afraid they're going to come after you again? Um, or can you actually commit and be part of this, right? And say, no, cancel culture is real. Stop doing it. Uh, so yes, she's right. At least though, we need that path to redemption. I'm glad she's seeing that and she's putting it out to her audience because that's an audience that needs to hear it even more than my audience even. Um, that if she can speak to a more liberal audience to say, guys, we need to work on forgiveness, redemption, uh, helping them take accountability, figure out what they, why they, why what they tweeted was wrong or why what they did was wrong and help them find a path to betterment. Now, I don't know if her, what her path is, as others have said, does her path mean follow my politics? And a lot of instances, sadly, for some people, that's what that means. It means who are you voting for? Do you believe in this person? Or are you against, okay, okay, well then fine, we can help you change. Uh, and that's scary because it shouldn't be about it. One's politics are, one, are one's politics. Politics and religion, <laughs> two things we're not supposed to talk about for a reason, because we're not always going to agree. There's going to be a lot of differences on those things. So uh, I've learned in my instance, it, surprisingly, the conservatives opened my eyes. They were more forgiving in my instance, uh, especially publicly. They were less afraid to make their feelings and their, their, their uh, opinions loud and clear. Um, and if you didn't agree with them, you didn't agree with them. And, and, and all the conservatives that I have gotten close to we don't agree politically always, but we hear each other out. We respect each other and our difference of opinions. And that's the real growth I feel like we all need to get to. There needs to be a path of redemption for <laughs> liberals to give conservatives and conservatives to give liberals of like, all right, it's not about a path of redemption. It's a path of understanding that we will never all agree. So we must agree to disagree at times. Uh, there can be areas where we think, you know what, this is too far. This isn't about politics. This is about you know, certain issues. And that's for some people, that's what it's about. But I think both sides... Uh, sometimes lump an entire group into, oh, well, all conservatives are this. All liberals are this. And we got, we got to stop doing that. Uh, so uh, good thoughts from Sarah Silverman. Thank you for sharing it. What do you guys think on this? Uh, <laughs> this is going to be a landmine in the comments of, are conservatives more, uh, you know, <laughs> they more forgiving than uh, liberals? Or do you feel like liberals are more, cons- uh, more forgiving than conservatives? Uh, or do you think they're about the same? Uh, curious your thoughts, respectfully, civilly, but we got to get engagement to get these videos to share uh, and spread uh, in the algorithm. So smash that like button if you haven't already. Uh, be sure to subscribe. Hit that uh, alerts to all. Uh, smash the like button, like I said. Leave a comment if you can. And be sure to share the video uh, as well uh, and check out these other videos that are going to pop up next to me. You can also hit that subscribe button right here. If you haven't already subscribed, what are you doing? Support the Popcorn Planet team, family, uh, and stay tuned here for more videos. Thanks for watching, everybody. See you later.